Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about the film Trainwreck. In a lot of ways, Trainwreck is something new. It's the first film starring and written by Amy Schumer. It's the first time Judd Apatow's directed a movie that he didn't write himself. It's also the first time Judd Apatow actually directed a movie in New York. And it's a lot of, like, first. And I think a lot of what this movie's portraying is it's something kind of different. And it's different for the Apatowian style, through Apatow himself, actually, this time. And in a lot of ways, it is. But in the ways that count, it feels like something we've definitely seen before and having all the kind of complaints of the Apatowian influence and Apatow himself that have just been a constant through his filmography and also having a plot that we've seen through many many romantic comedies and through Apatow's work himself certainly this movie's really funny there's no way you cannot laugh during this movie but it just feels like a big studio romantic comedy with an up-and-coming star rather than really highlighting a different comedic voice it's just that different comedic voice sprinkles jokes throughout rather than doing anything different with the plot it feels like a million other comedies you've seen before so in a way it's very comfortable while still being very funny it feels like such a typical romantic comedy because it comforts you without really changing anything and challenging you in any way and that's kind of how train work works at its best but it also shows the problems with both Apatow himself and trying to do a kind of more commercial big studio film through a looser improv comedy and through Judd Apatow's direction. Amy, played by Amy Schumer, who is going out with all sorts of different guys, sleeping around, getting drunk, having a good time, going out with her boyfriend, played by John Cena, the wrestler, who is actually fairly funny in this film, and living kind of a cool life, working for a men's magazine called Snuff. And then at the magazine, she's assigned to do a story on a sports doctor, played by Bill Hayes who's a big sports doctor who's worked on many of the top athletes. LeBron James is one of his best friends and she's writing a cover story on him. She really likes him and thinks he's really funny and very attractive and they start going out and having a relationship. But as they have this relationship, he starts noticing the problems with her drinking and how much pot she smokes and how she has slept with a lot more guys than he has slept with women. And as they're also dealing with her dad, played by Colin Quinn, and him being in the nursing home and her trying to get her life together with this new relationship with Bill Hader, the sports doctor. I think I've complained about this on so many of these films that are either very Judd Apatow influenced or directed by Judd Apatow himself, is that they take on these structures that are really better suited for more well-structured Hollywood films. Then they try to make them looser and in this improv vibe, and it doesn't really work. The only one who's really good at combining a plot with that is Paul Feig. Everyone else who comes from this Judd Apatow wave of comedy, some of them are good at it for like one movie but most of them it kind of falters because it's really something you have to have precisely down and mixing in all these other elements to it doesn't really work and you kind of end up with a fairly messy film and that's again the problem with train wreck now it's not as bad at that and also in quality as like something like this is 40 or funny people it's actually probably a semi return to form a return to form for someone who still makes movies that are far too long and far too improv and have too many elements in them and always have a plot thread that you could easily cut out of the movie but it's still a very funny movie I still laughed a lot during the film but there's certain times when it tries to get serious and the film just stops it just feels like to get the characters to evolve they have to do these really sudden and dramatic changes because they kind of had written on a board like oh this has to happen to a main character at some point rather than having the film build to that I like these Avatar films to a certain extent and I, I like him and interviews with him and such but I, I think the the problem with these films is they are really influenced by films that were not as loose and improv that were highly scripted, that were highly planned out. When he combines that style with his own style, it just becomes a mess, and it's something that really has never really worked. Most of his movies that he has directed aren't really that great and are too long, and I wish he would make a film that was like 90 minutes, 110 at most. That's how most comedies are, but for some reason he can never do that, and they're always is about 20 minutes too long. Now this one with Amy Schumer's script, apparently she wrote the script under the guise that it would be a Judd Apatow movie, and you can really tell that throughout the film. I was a little surprised he doesn't have a writing credit because it feels so much like him throughout the film. I mean, a lot of the jokes are hers, and the things about her character felt very her, but 
the way the film flowed felt very Judd Apatow. I also think the way they view relationships in Judd Apatow films is very conservative. But Amy Schumer, you know, the thing that she's always been criticized of, and I think it's similar to Judd Apatow, is they're really kind of upholding stereotypes than challenging them. It doesn't feel like a new 2015 movie. It feels like a film I could be watching in 1985 in terms of its views on relationships. Her just giving up drinking and drugs and everything to be like this better woman for her boyfriend and that's happened in Knocked Up and his other movies and how you know suddenly they change and whatnot. I don't really love that idea. It gives this idea that first off that that's an easy thing to give up that she suddenly just won't go back to those things or that it doesn't really address that she could either have a serious problem or that there's probably other issues to deal with there other than just that and they kind of go into that in a very rom com kind of like oh this is solved and that's not really very complex of an argument and it just feels very comfortable like oh well that is solved i understand it's a comedy and it's supposed to be lighter and stuff but i don't really like how this film deals with relationships in that way. I understand she is like drinking too much and getting high and like and sometimes it's just like wasting around and sleeping with lots of guys and that's certainly a problem. I mean the sleeping with other guys is certainly a problem in the relationship but I don't really love how that seems to be his go-to and it just feels like his whole thing with all of his protagonists is like they need to grow up. Her views on women it just does feel like a lot of cliches just brought up in a very jokey manner. In a lot of ways maybe that's why I think it's funny because they're just just like bringing up things that are very comfortable that we already understand and using them and maybe I should just relax about it than complaining about how conservative it is. I think that maybe that's why his films have worked and become so influential because they're easier to get into. You don't have to think too much about them. And I think that's true with this film, but I still think there's just way, way too many plot lines. And there's certain jokes that there's a funeral scene where they try to do jokes and the jokes kept falling flat. His need to put in all these sports celebrity cameos. Look, John Cena was funny. LeBron James is all right. The cameo thing, I don't really get. Judd Apatow like really wants them to act and maybe try something a little different, but it does feel a little Seth MacFarlane-y. I do like Amy Schumer. I honestly think this shows how good of a joke writer she is more than anything. It doesn't make me awed her screenwriting skills. She has a lot of good one-liners in this movie that put the whole audience into hysterics. And I like Bill Hader, although I feel like that part is pretty much like taking the manic pixie dream girl and gender reversing it he does kind of feel like the women in apatow movie who kind of make the guy grow up they don't do it as heavily but it's still there i'm not saying that like it should be a woman who's like this one-dimensional love interest who doesn't feel as complicated and is very dreamy and wonderful it still makes me think like maybe we should beef up that part in this film that part's weaker and it kind of hurts the movie in a lot of ways because it makes it less of a complex argument i guess maybe my problem with these kind of movies is there are smart people behind them but the film itself isn't as smart. I feel like a smarter romantic comedy that came out last summer was Obvious Child and that works a lot better with these kind of tropes and it's a lot funnier and is a much better movie. And Trainwreck is just kind of showing all the problems with this current comedy style yet again and just with Amy Schumer as its star. I think Amy Schumer she could be really funny and I would like to see her work with different directors. I would actually like to see her work with someone like Paul Feig or someone who just knows how to work the style even better or maybe someone who directs stuff for her show or her directing it herself because this also felt like it was coming from so much of Apatow as much as she wrote it it still felt very apatow and I kind of want her to maybe break away from that next time. It was still like a really funny comedy. I'm still not in love with this style and I think maybe because the style can't really be honest with itself and I think that's probably part of the problem with the plot structure and what Apatow is trying to do is like it feels like this different school of comedy or it's supposed to be but like it felt like the old schools and like the frat pack took more liberties than really he does. It feels like he just jumped to the generation before him in the 90s and just like took those plots and brought them all back again. I like when people do older Hollywood stuff but it feels like using these structures to find a point but never actually finding the point and that it acts like it's like smarter and like understands character more and if we have all these improvs or we're alone with the character and it always ends up failing them and failing the movie and just you get these messy films. These big studio comedies masquerading as more improv low budget comedies but they're really just the same thing just in a different style and 
to be honest, not that much more interesting. Meet your new boss, same as the old boss. It was a really funny movie, it's a really enjoyable movie, but it's the same complaints I have with Apatow and the current state of mainstream comedy all over again, but it was still pretty funny. So if you have seen Trainwreck and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.